Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Newsroom Series on Channels Television, where we update you on what's happening from the different geopolitical zones of the country. I'm Alumide McCauley. Thank you for joining us. Our focus today is the Southwest region, but we'll begin with our top stories. Justice Peter Lifu of the Federal High Court Abuja has stopped the Independent National Electoral Commission from releasing voter register to the River State Independent Electoral Commission for the purpose of conducting the October 5th, 2024 local government elections in the state. The court also barred the Inspector General of Police, the IGP, and the Department of State Services, DSS, from providing security. Justice Lifu issued the order against INEC while delivering judgment in a suit brought before him by the All Progressives Congress. Justice Lifu held that the River State Electoral Commission was wrong in fixing the October 5th date for the conduct of the poll into the 23 local governments when all relevant laws guiding the election had not been complied with. Justice Peter Lifu also held that the update and review of voter register ought to have been concluded before an election date conduct be legally and validly fixed in law. President Bola Tinubu has sworn in Kudurat Kekirioko Ekun as the Chief Justice of Nigeria. The ceremony took place at the Council Chamber of the State House in Abuja. The event had in attendance Vice President Kashin Shatima, Senate President Gatsu Lakpabio, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Right Honorable Tajuddin Abbas, Minister of, Ministers of Information, Mohammed Idris, the FCT, Yes and Wike of Justice, Latif Fagwemi, and Special Duties. The swearing-in of Justice Kekiri Ekun as substantive Chief Justice of Nigeria follows our confirmation by the Nigerian Senate last week. Now we focus in the southwest region and we begin with security. The Lagos State Police Command has hosted a security town hall meeting with all state actors. The meeting called at the instance of the Commissioner of Police, Olanrewaju Ishola, had other security agencies as well in attendance. Speaking of the proposed October 1st protest, the state police boss explained that though it's the right of the people to protest, it should be done within the ambits of the law. Now, we're pleased to have with us a newsroom series, Honorable Commissioner of Police, Alani Raju Shalaya. Welcome to the program. Thank you for making out the time to be with us. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And let's begin with how recently you've been called into office. You are barely two weeks in office as the Lagos Police Commissioner. Are we to expect, what are we to expect as you go about securing the center of excellence. Thank you so much. My maiden lecture to the press when I came into the command is that the command we, we expect a better policing system that is people oriented and people friendly. And I also told them that there'll be a lot of synergy between the command or I mean, my own command and other sister agencies and with much emphasis on disability policing. Policemen will be seen on the road as to give confidence to people that the security of the state is guaranteed. We're going to have a very robust patrol, put policemen on the road, motorized patrol, as much as we can within the details of the tools available to us. And I'm going to place emphasis on community policing. Police can be everywhere at the same time. People that we brought in as partners in the task of policing labels. And don't forget, the Nigerian Police Force has a very robust police community relations committee in place that assists us in things like this. I also said I'll make traffic flow. And the testament to that, people have been calling me on the travel time that has been reduced in Lagos. It is often said that a city made for, for speed is made for efficiency. When traffic flows, it reduces incidences of one chance or opportunistic, opportunistic robberies. And um, I'm going to have 
a monitoring system in place to make sure that every policeman in Lagos Police Command do his or our job. By and large, it's going to be people friendly, people will trust us, and all the things that characterized the bad behaviors of the policemen in the past will not be tolerated under my under my tenureship here. Thank you. Now, Commissioner, one thing that is recently maybe bothering the minds of Lagos residents is the proposed protest coming up tomorrow on October the 1st, Independence Day. What are we to expect from the police in Lagos in terms of security of life and property? Thank you so much. There should be no apprehension about October 1st. It's a day ordinarily good Nigerians should celebrate independence from colonial masters. But by and large, the mother people feel, or they feel it's a day they should exercise their franchise by way of protest. Nothing is wrong in that. Constitutionally, they are, they are, they are allowed. My message to the Gosha is that they should go about their fanfare and fun fair and enjoy the day. We have the whole place wrapped up. There will be no breakdown of, law, breakdown of law and order on that day. And don't forget the people have written to me that should probably guarantee their safety. I will guarantee their safety so long as they keep within the ambit of the law. You can't be riotous or unruly. I want me to protect you. Incidentally, I called all the organizers into my office just last week, Friday, and we all had a roundtable conference whereby they said, should the protest take place, it will be peaceful. And they still reiterated the fact that I must, as a matter of urgency or duty, protect them from good laws in their language. It's going to be a good day for all Nigerians. There should be no apprehension of any fear. People should go about their lawful duties. We have the whole place sealed up and all will be Indeed. well. Indeed, we certainly uh, pray for peaceful Independence Day celebrations, not just for Lagos State, but all over the states in Nigeria. And we thank you for coming on the program today. Congratulations on your, on your new appointment and position as a Commissioner of Police in Lagos State. Commissioner of Police in Lagos State, Alari Waju Ishala. Thank you for coming on Newsroom Series. Thank you for having me. Now, let's turn our attention to the weather. And as the heavy rainfall continued across parts of the country, the National Emergency Management Agency says people who have houses located in floodplains must heed the state government's advice and evacuate as more rainfall is expected in the days ahead. The NEMA Southwest coordinator in an interview with Channels Television confirmed that two people died in the heavy rainfall of last week while two children were missing as a result of the rainfall, which submerged houses, cars, shops, and other business premises along Green Road and Uluyole local government areas of the state. The Yaste government, with support from the World Bank, has made significant progress in managing urban flooding in Ibadan over the past few years. This effort has greatly reduced the frequency of disasters caused by heavy rainfall. Waterways have been properly channeled and some houses built on this part had to be demolished for the greater good of flood control. However, heavy rainfall in the last two weeks has still affected lives and property. There was a major one that led to loss of lives around just the area. We have uh, two, two deaths were recorded and two people are missing. So it was a high impact disaster that uh, affected vast part of Ibadan, mainly around the, uh, that Ring Road area, Felele, and Arakpaja area along the major river channel that leads to Ijebodi. Some residents, including fish farmer Mr. Olu Moses, have shared their experiences on how the recent damper has impacted their livelihoods and businesses. I read about 2,000 fish in my pond and everything flooded up yesterday as a result of the rain. So I had a huge loss 
of the process. We, the farmers, have passed through a lot and we invested money in this uh, fish business. So government should be kind enough to at least look into a way to give us some cash so that we'll start again. Due to the drainage, there is no drainage at the other side. So we expect the water to follow through the drainage at the back, but the water is too much. It now follow through the, enter through the gates and push the fence and damages many things around this place. The state government recently rehabilitated the over 70 kilometer Akala Express, now renamed Theophilus Akieli Road, which stretches from New Garage to Akwata. However, the recent rains are beginning to affect the road, with debris being washed across it and potholes forming due to indiscriminate refuse dumping into the drainage. While efforts to clear the affected drainages are ongoing, some individuals continue to dump waste back into them, worsening the flooding situation. Bungalow was submerged in water. Even a story building, the down part was submerged in water. And uh, during the assessment, we can see that uh, a lot of refuse were flung into those houses. So it was clear that the, the flood was uh, embedded with a lot of refuse. And as a matter of fact, it was the refuse that actually blocked the narrow channel that was supposed to exit the flood water, which now compiled the incident of flooding that uh, impacted the area. So the local government, the cities, the community themselves, they need to go up and drain and clear their own drain because they are the ones using the drain. And if that's what happens, they will be the ones that will suffer it. So it's important that uh, they realize the need for them to clear the drains before we have another major flooding. As the rainfall continues to sweep across your state, it's imperative that the Ministry of Environment and other relevant agencies take proactive measures to sensitize residents on the need for responsible living to mitigate the risks associated with heavy rainfall. Bukola Uriu, Channel Television News. You're watching Newsroom Series coming up, redefining tourism opportunities in Ekiti State. Please stay with us. Welcome back. Medical experts have called for the adoption and integration of technology for early detection and management of diabetes, the non-communicable disease, which represents about 4.3% prevalence and 55-year life expectancy, especially amongst low-income earners in the country. They made the call in Abeokuta, the Ogun State Capital, during the 45th General Meeting and Scientific Conference held in the State Capital. Diabetes, though a non-communicable disease, is a major public health concern globally, especially in low-income countries. According to the World Health Organization, the prevalence of diabetes in Nigeria is around 4.3%, leading to many deaths annually. To address these challenges, a gathering of about 200 delegates, including endocrinologists, chemical pathologists and physicians, was held to discuss knowledge sharing and workable solutions. <laughs> Professor Andrew Uloko, the acting national president of the Endocrinology and Metabolism Society of Nigeria, highlighted the importance of early intervention in preventing complications. As endocrinologists, we undertake research, clinical practice, teaching, training, and community service in the fields of endocrinology, diabetes, metabolism, and nutrition. The theme of the meeting, Technology in the Management of Type 2 Diabetes, Current and Future Directions, called for the adoption of modern automated technology to manage the disease more effectively. Many of these devices are unattainable by these groups due to cost, poor health literacy, and educational deprivation. And this is where the work is for you and I. Ogun State's Commissioner for Health, Dr. Tommy Coker, stressed the need for accessible and affordable care. The burden of the disease sits in the rural area. So how can we use technology to reach those people, to help them manage their non-communicable disease? And together, we can then prolong the average life 
lifespan of a Nigerian from 55 that it is right now. With contributions from leading endocrinologists and health officials, the event aimed to create actionable steps to enhance diabetes management with hopes that the recommendations will lead to better health outcomes across the country. The Lagos State Deputy Governor Kadri Hamzat has assured Nigerian youth that in spite of challenges facing the country, there is hope for the youth. The Deputy Governor, who is speaking at a National Youth Symposium to mark his 60th birthday, urges the youth to take advantage of opportunities available to them and become self-reliant. To be able to grow bigger or even start at all, to come join us in this space. Victoria Garden Conference and Event Center, Alao Saikeja, is fully occupied by some youths in different groups, NYSC core members, senior government officials, academic scholars, among other guests, who are here for the National Youth Symposium organized by the state government in commemoration of the 60th birthday of the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Kadri Hamzat. The celebrant who has just stepped into the sixth floor is here alongside his wife, Mrs. Oluremi Hamzat, to lecture the youths on the opportunities that are bound for them. Can we just uh, put our hands together for Nigeria, our country? The former Vice Chancellor of the Lagos State University, Professor Olare Wajufagbu, leads the conversation on guiding the youth on the path to self reliance. Guiding the youth towards self reliance is not just a solution to unemployment, but also a critical pathway to national development. A self reliant youth population will fuel economic growth, reduce poverty levels, and contribute to a more stable and prosperous society. Next is a panel session, including the State Commissioner for Agriculture and Food Systems, Youths and Social Development, the Executive Secretary and CEO of Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, among others, who engage the youths on numerous opportunities available for them in agriculture, tech industry, and in other fields. In the last couple of months, and looking at all the policies that we have been trying to put in place in the last three years, a lot will be changing going forward, meaning even for our youth, as we continue to train, mentor, and support them, we would have to make land available for them to be able to, you know, cultivate, rear, grow, and obviously support them to market. As a youth, to survive and to thrive, you need to be confident, you need to be bold, and you need to believe in yourself. Because the worst thing anybody can say to you is no, and no cannot kill you. We all need to focus not on the conventional, but on the technical and the traditional uh, work, like technical skills, plumbing, carpentry. We feel that these areas are left for people who are not educated, but it's not true. The Lagos State Deputy Governor encourages the youth to be hopeful for a better country because they are in a position to drive the positive change that Nigeria needs. I know that tough times don't last, only tough people do. And as such, I encourage you to focus and continue to plan on because you get to that de destination with your mental health intact and your success and prosperity assured. The take-home message from the National Youth Symposium is for the youth to emulate the leadership skills of Dr. Kadri Hamzat, become self-reliant and take up roles that will shape the future of Lagos State and the country at large. And now to politics. Edo State Governor-elect Ms. Damande Okwebolo paid a curtsy visit to the Lagos State Governor Babajide Somolu at the Lagos House Marina to appreciate him for his support during the Edo State Governorship election. The governor-elect, who was accompanied by his deputy, Mr. Dennis Idahosa, deputy governor of Edo State, Mr. Philip Schwaibu, and some APC chieftains, appealed to Governor Babajide Somolu to continue to support him in serving and delivering dividends of democracy to the people of Edo State. The people of Ekiti State have urged the government to take swift action to develop and open up the state's numerous tourist sites to attract investors. This call for intervention comes as a response to the current economic challenges facing Nigeria, 
with local seeing tourism as a potential solution for boosting the state's economy. A special report highlighted that many of Ekiti's tourist sites remain underdeveloped, despite their potential to attract investors and generate revenue. Ekiti State, located in southwest Nigeria, is a treasure trove of tourism waiting to be unleashed. With a population of 2.8 million, it's the most homogeneous state in the country, yet its tourism potentials are incredibly diverse. Ikogosi Warm Springs Resort is a wonder of nature. Imagine soaking in the natural wonder of Kogosi Warm Springs Resort, where warm and cold water merge, yet retain their thermal identities. The tour guide also explains the wonders of the warm and cold water. I'm right here at the meeting point of the cold and the warm. The cold water is brownish in color. Why the warm water is the bright colored water. And here is the meeting point of the two types of waters. This haven has attracted 190,000 tourists, including 30 foreigners between 2011 and 2013. Thanks to the governor, Mr. Biodun Oyebanji, power supply has been restored after a decade, making it even more appealing. The effect is that we're going to create more employment, generate more idea that we've done at Ikogosi. You know, we transformed the economic landscape of Ikiti, the economic landscape of Ikogosi. You know, we've engaged, we have over 150 staff, IGR that's grown, people are energetic youths that will have been roaming the streets, are better engaged. They're part of our landscape team, they're part of our management team. So it's been a win-win for all. People of Ikiti will be able to, to cruise on Ureji Dam. And before Easter next year, people of Ekiti will be able to cruise on Erodam. In Okemesi Ekiti, a museum showcasing relics of the Ekiti Parako Freedom War. There is one rock in the Niger called Olua, Olua Rock, which is yearning for development. It has not been recognized for now. Erodam. Then Erodam is being developed. You know, we, we have a, a ranch there, and then Ekiti has been doing something there. They made that place a dam. And that, that place is unique for their Ekigure at Ekogosi. We, it was a, a god made a, a monument because there the hot and cold water they meet. Like, uh, like a letter Y, and they become one, and they are flowing there. That is that place. And I, I thank God, Governor Payemi recognized and they started that place. And then we are now lucky that even an indigenous of Ikogos is there now. We want to do something. Other breathtaking spots include Arinta Waterfalls, 10 meters of chilly water cascading down with potential for hydroelectric power generation. Aerodam and Okewu waiting to be developed for tourism. With these gems, Ekiti people are eager to tap into tourism for economic growth. The state government says it is committed to develop these sites, collaborating with the Federal Ministry of Tourism. And that's where we have to leave it on today's edition of Newsroom Series. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Alumide McCauley.